Hey, there we go. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is February 7th, 2019, and we're going to write a little code today. I've got my Hollywood <clears throat> my Hollywood Tower Hotel, the hotel from the the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. I'm wearing that because I'm I'm stepping outside my comfort zone today. I'm going somewhere that I'm not used to to coding here today because I'm I'm joined today by Tyler Leonhardt. Hey Tyler, thanks so much for joining me. Hey, it's great to be here. How's everybody doing? Oh man. So so why don't you give folks a little intro of who you are and and let's talk about what we're going to learn today. Sure, sure. So my name is Tyler, as you can tell. Uh, I'm a software engineer on the PowerShell team at Microsoft. Uh, PowerShell, for those of you that don't know, is a scripting language uh, originally invented at Microsoft. Uh, but since then, about two years ago, it was open source and made cross-platform for all, all to use. And uh, I think today we're going to be writing some PowerShell. Yeah, right. So that's the, that's that's the interesting part to me, right? Is here's something, here's a, a scripting language, here's a shell environment that Microsoft built that's that's open source and runs Windows, Mac, and Linux. Anybody can use it, no matter where they are. Um, it, gosh, a lot of great friends here in the chat room, and folks are saying uh, they're looking forward to this. PowerShell is the best shell, says Dilly Daleks. Um, Hugo says and can natively access .net. Yeah, That's absolutely. Right. That's right. Oh, here's a here's a good question for you, Tyler. Since you're on the team, you might be able to help answer this. Our friend Mike Eaton is asking: Are people really using PowerShell on Macs or Linux? Yeah, that's a, a great question. Um, in fact, if you spare me a few seconds, I can pull up our uh, little dashboard that is public. Sure. Uh, if I could type correctly. No problem. <laughs> um, and while you're looking that up, Jeffrey Huntley, hey, good morning, yeah. 2 a.m. Wow, dropping in to say hi, <laughs> welcome. Organic IT is saying Jeffrey Snover for president. <laughs> um, it, that's, of course, a reference. Jeff Snover is the engineer that, that discovered, it first built PowerShell, right? The first lead on that. Um, yes, that's right. Um, all right, so I've got the dashboard here. Let me, how should I send you this link? Uh, uh, go ahead and put it into the Skype chat. I'll yes. grab it out of there and we'll uh, switch over and I'll put it on the screen for everybody to see. Yeah, so that is the link on the GitHub, which has the link to the dashboard. Uh, and that'll show you that actually uh, in January, uh, we had about seven million uh starts uh on linux alone so okay so uh, i'm here this is github.com slash powershell slash powershell where the powershell right. team keeps their source and you and you've jumped me over here from this link community dashboard to a power mm -hmm. bi holy That's crow right. look at that okay so uh, there's a lot here to consume let me let me just Monthly usage by version, December, January, and then February. And there's these are millions is the scale yeah. over here on the side. Yep. I got I gotta move out of the way here. Hang on. Actually I can probably just slide this over or something. There we go. That's easier for us to see. No. So there we go. what we're seeing here is a lot of uh, what I think is really cool is that uh, in the Linux side, especially uh, you see it used in a lot of CI situations, uh, continuous integration, right? Um, so <laughs> just to plug some names here, for example, Azure DevOps uh, on their hosted uh, Ubuntu and uh, Mac OS builds, they have PowerShell uh, already installed on the machine uh, and also, or in the containers, I should say. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And AppVair is the same way if you use AppVair. Uh, and some of the other uh, big CI platforms as well. But yeah. <clears throat> so um, Code Therapist asks, asks the obvious follow-up question. How's the data collected? Uh, so without getting too into the, into the details, uh, PowerShell has a single data point of telemetry today, uh, and that is startup time. So anytime, so for the first time, the PowerShell has startup, uh, started up uh, there's that one bit of telemetry that we do collect for this specific reason, because people ask us, 
who actually is you? Like, why are, are people actually using this, right? And, sure. uh, and this kind of helps us do that. Um, cool. Yeah. So. And um, our friend Jeffrey Huntley here is giving a shout out for Planet pa- pa- mm-hmm. PlanetPowerShell.com. You familiar right. with that? I feel like I might have seen it uh, just scouring the, the web, but I, I'll definitely have to give it a, a harder look for sure. sure. All right. Um, hey, Svava, good to see you. And I'm seeing all kinds of friends <laughs> popping in there. There's the PowerShell Live logo in the bottom corner. What's yeah. PowerShell Live, Tyler? Yeah, so PowerShell Live is uh, a group of people out in the PowerShell community that have that have started streaming. Uh, so I, I noticed a few faces in the chat already from from members of PowerShell Live, uh, and yeah, it's 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 great. It's uh, both a Twitch handle PowerShell Live and also a Twitter handle uh, at PowerShell Live, uh, and the Twitter handle will post when people are streaming or when someone has an event coming up, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, so just another way to engage the PowerShell community in this new thing called streaming. So yeah, it's right. Fun. To, to keep up as things develop, as new features come out, as new uh, new versions are released, good idea to stay attached to, to that environment, right? to those different touch yeah. points, even if you don't want to watch PowerShell TV all the time, to be able to drop <laughs> in and, and see somebody doing something interesting, you might learn something. Yeah, yeah. and I, I do want to stress that this is like, uh, the person who maintains that account is a community member. It's not someone at Microsoft. Mm-hmm. And 99% of the people in uh, that are a part of PowerShell Live are community members. So it's all, uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's all it's all community driven, which to me I think is fantastic. Oh my gosh, it's so great when when a, a community is able to engage and and not just learn but help grow and. and grow so that it meets their needs and as a stakeholder cross those boundaries so that you get what you need to be more productive to get your job yeah. done so you can go home at the end of the day or maybe grow your career in a direction that's important to you right. so um look at this some great tips being dropped in the chat room there hey stelzy uh night 0323 thanks so much for that subscription with twitch prime um you're going to get to use the .net bot everywhere that twitch bots Twitch emotes <laughs> are are able to be used. Um, ah, nice. Very cool. And we'll make a donation to Black Girls Code all through first quarter 2019. We're going to donate our cheers and our subscriptions to Black Girls Code. That's awesome. Really great stuff. Thanks. Uh, PowerShell.org is a great place to get help with PowerShell, yep. says Organic IT. Yep. Hey, there's Lee. Good morning. SQL DBA with a beard knows a thing or two about PowerShell. Sounds like it. My gosh. Lots of yes, great links and things there. Thank you for the follow. Third and gold. Now, I don't know if you know this, Tyler, but I did this thing about two weeks ago where I dyed my beard rainbow. I think you mm-hmm. actually, you may have seen me yes, while I was still. I did. And I'm getting ready for build 2019. If we hit 7,000 yes. followers, I'm going to dye my beard again. Ooh. That might be a little bit crazy. Mike Eaton, What's the thank you. right so- now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for the resub. Uh, six <laughs> months on the six month streak, and I'm now number one on the throat punch list. Nice, nice. Um, <clears throat> the Beebs for first quarter 2019, so January, February, March, will donate to to Black Girls Code. Negative sentiment detected. We're not doing we're not doing that negative sentiment yet. It's not wired up. We worked on that Tuesday. Not here yet. <laughs> um, let's see. So so for build 2019, and we announced build 2019. So make sure you check out out here, microsoft.com slash build, and it'll route you to the appropriate language. Um, we're both going to end up being involved with this. It's, it's in Seattle, May 6 to 8, and there's a call for content for folks. So if you're interested in speaking at build, bringing a good customer story, what's been great about, about PowerShell, about Azure, about DevOps, yeah. .NET, Visual Studio, click through that call for speakers, and uh, you can you might be speaking at Build. This is the first time they've done this, right? Call yeah, for speakers. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. It it is right, and Build is typically a, a real showcase for you know here's the new technologies, here's the things that are coming that Microsoft <laughs> has been building and working on around around all of our products, and then to mm-hmm. bring in to bring in community members to talk about here's some cool things that are going on in the community. 
I think is a great opportunity to, just as we were saying about PowerShell, spread our wings, open up and say, look, there's so many cool things that Microsoft is doing for everybody, not just for a select set of customers. Right. Yeah. So is that a week after the PowerShell summit asks core Bob? Um, I think it's around there. Around there? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like first, first week of May. It's in my it's in my calendar, it's but calendar. <laughs> I don't I don't have it exactly. But but yeah, PowerShell Summit is is a big uh, conference PowerShell related that is in uh, in Seattle as well, or in the greater Seattle area. There you go. There you we go. Bellevue, Washington. Thank you, SQL right. DBA with a beard. I appreciate that. Um, so there's that event going on as well, and mm-hmm. uh, Smab UK says tempted to go to build this year. Talk you should to go me tomorrow. You should go. It's going to be an amazing event. Talk yeah. to me tomorrow. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm gonna have something that I can share tomorrow about build. All right. Um. Let's see. We'd love to go to build. Family scheduled a trip to North Carolina that week. Ah. PowerShell Conference Europe in Hanover, Germany, June four to seven. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll be at that one. It's so, gonna be gonna be fun. Um. Very cool stuff. So there's there's yeah. our our promotion about build. There you go. Look at this, man. It's SQL DBA with a beard's just got all the events <laughs> queued up here. Firing yeah, them great. one after another. <laughs> PowerShell Conference Asia. Didi, yep. can't wait to see everybody at Build. Hey, Didi, good to see you. Isaac wants to go to Build. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we, we'll we talk a little bit more about Build tomorrow <laughs> as well. All right. Um, so we, we started showing the PowerShell team is out here on GitHub. And this, That's right. th- this is huge that we're seeing more and more Microsoft products on GitHub, completely open source that folks can download and get involved with. Um, gosh, Daniel Silva is saying working with PowerShell on a Raspberry Pi. Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. SQL awesome. Mr. Magoo, I got to acknowledge that. First sub to hit a year. One year subscription. Mm. Thank you so much. Um, really That's appreciate awesome. that. Absolutely. Let's, I can drop some applause in there. We've got some yeah, of that. Let's see it. There we go. Thank you very much, SQL Mr. McGoo. One year. Absolutely. And I, I do want to do something special for folks who reach a year. Let me come back and talk about that tomorrow. We, I want to spend some time here with our, <laughs> with our guest. Um, all right. Microsoft GitHub. No, it's not Microsoft GitHub. It's just <laughs> GitHub. Um, and it's all independent, but all of our stuff is free, open source out here. And you can you can click through and see all the source code here. Do you, do you get contributions from the community on PowerShell? Oh, tons. Tons. Like, uh, I'd say probably about, like, at least half of the contributions into PowerShell these days are community members. Wow. Um, yeah, it's it's impressive. Yeah. Uh, the, it's, it's not just like, you know... Uh, we we did this thing and open sourced it, but it's kind of like a read only for everybody else, right? But this is now this is the real deal. We're like accepting contributions from uh, from everybody and uh, and just having the community kind of drive the product forward, which is awesome to me. It is. It, Code Therapist says it's similar to the other open source projects at Microsoft, like Core FX. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's that, that's so good to see, the, right? That folks are getting involved. Yep. Um, it really, it, I don't know about you, but for our projects on .NET side, di- when we do get those folks giving contributions or they find something, a performance fix, and it, it improves the product, it's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. We're so grateful oh, yeah. for those contributions. Absolutely. Hmm. Um, okay, so we wanted to talk, we wanted to get in here and talk a little bit about some of the new features, some of the things that are coming here. Um, I even see there's a there's PowerShell plugins for Visual Studio Code, so that's yes. that's got me thinking. Yeah, so uh, I'm actually one of the maintainers for this project. Okay. Uh, I work on the on the PowerShell extension for VS Code a bunch. Uh, it's kind of <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it is our uh, recommended editing experience. Oh hey, there you go. <laughs> hey, look, I know that guy. <laughs> uh, recommended editing experience for for PowerShell Core. Uh, scripts and uh, it, it also works with Windows PowerShell. If if you happen to still be using Windows PowerShell, it works okay. there as well. Uh, and and yeah, it's it's fun working on an extension. I have to admit. Oh my gosh! Especially for like my favorite 
editor like easily. So, yeah. And Dilly Delex is saying the PowerShell VS Code extension is hot. Nice. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> um, so, looking down here, uh, syntax highlighting code snippets for PowerShell. That mm -hmm. feels like. Oh my gosh, yeah, I expect that in my Visual Studio, but to have it for right. the scripting language, it's like, yes, right? That gives right. me more. Exactly. Um, what's the script analyzer? What does that do? Right, so uh, if those of you that are familiar with linters in general, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's, uh, what's the C-sharp one called? Uh, like OmniSharp type of thing. It, anyway, it's it's for, uh, it's, it's PowerShell's linter. It's provides you with the little green and red squigglies. Uh, yeah, Roslyn Analyzer, thank you. Yeah. Uh, the green and red squigglies that say, you know, you should do this instead of this, or you've got a parse error, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's uh, what PowerShell Script Analyzer is. Okay. Um, I've got to bring up Rambling Geek's question here. Is Windows PowerShell going to be phased out? I'm guessing he's referring to in favor of PowerShell Core. Right, so today, uh, Windows PowerShell is not receiving any new features. Okay. Uh, and what we are trying to do eventually is have PowerShell Core uh, replace Windows PowerShell. So now, it'll, it'll uh, have parity, similar feature set. Right. So the okay. goal is for, for it to have parity. Uh, and uh, and of course, there's, there's a few challenges with that. And so uh, for a little bit of context, one of the big differences between Windows PowerShell and PowerShell Core is that one is uh, built on top of the .NET framework, which is Windows PowerShell, which is why it's Windows only. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. The other side is uh, PowerShell Core, which is on top of .NET Core, uh, which allows it to be cross-platform. So there are still some gaps between .NET Framework and, uh, and .NET Core today. Mm. Um, for example, uh, WinForms and WPF, all of those, which are now coming in .NET Core 3.0. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. We, I'm sure uh, you're pretty excited about that. Oh, we are really excited about .NET Core 3. There's um, yeah. there's a lot to be said about, about some of those enhancements that are coming. And it, gosh, just being able to get the performance benefits of .NET Core mm -hmm. on WinForms and WPF and being able to have the portable framework that goes with it so right. that we can have multiple versions of .NETs on exactly. our machines. Tremendous. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's beautiful. Uh, and it's actually something that the PowerShell team is really looking forward to uh, because there's a lot of things that people do out in the PowerShell world uh, where they use those, those libraries like WinForms and stuff mm. within PowerShell uh, to, you know, uh, send out, like, different types of GUIs for people who are not totally comfortable, you know, entering commands manually at a command line. Sure, so, sure. Uh, yeah, so .NET Core 3 is going to be big for PowerShell. Uh, uh, just, uh, I guess, stay tuned to see what we're doing with that. But to get back to the original question really quick, uh, the hardest challenge uh, with regards to having PowerShell Core replace Windows PowerShell is that we don't want it to uh, ship uh, in the same fashion as Windows PowerShell ships in Windows, uh, because that does slow down our life cycle, uh, right. our release cycle quite substantially. So we're figuring out which way, like how we want to get PowerShell Core into Windows. Uh, and so uh, we're still having those discussions. We're not quite there yet, which is why Windows PowerShell is going to stay in Windows for now. Uh, so uh, stay tuned on how we'll figure that out for keep an for eye PowerShell. on PowerShell live and you'll yeah. hear more. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. This is the same problem that we hit with, with .NET framework and why we started moving things for .NET over into NuGet so that we could ship some of those things out of band and don't have to wait for, don't have to wait for uh, update Tuesday, right? Patch Tuesday. We can, right. we, we can apply those new versions and, and patches as they're ready. So not necessarily yeah. with the operating system. Maybe there's right. a base version that ships with the operating system and we're able to update out of band from Windows appropriately. Yeah. Um, so oh, go ahead. there are other mechanisms for, for shipping 
uh, with Windows, but not in Windows, like features on demand or in the in the store, for example. Uh, so we're exploring those those ways. We want to make it easy for people who uh, are used to having something in box. Sure. Uh, we and, might yeah. have some time to announce things that might get everybody's attention. Not saying any any time <laughs> in particular, but there there might be an event or something where it might be appropriate right. to talk about some of those things more i'm yeah, not yeah. not suggesting anything but yeah yeah so um similarly perry at digital ox asks is there a release date yet for core three um the great thing question. about about net core and that is a good question <laughs> is it'll ship when it's done yeah so we'll we'll make sure that it's done when it's done and we'll ship it when it's done so yeah. we've and, and we've shown in the past that we don't have a problem shipping outside of a major event. So yeah. when it's done, you'll get it. And actually, uh, uh, some folks on the, on the PowerShell team have already started like taking that, uh, that preview build of .NET mm. 3.0 and have been trying to get it working with, with PowerShell Core. So nice. uh, we're also making some progress on that front as well. There you go. Core Bob is saying, so what I hear you saying is .NET Core 3 will ship by the end of the day. <laughs> Kappa. Ah, love the love the sarcastic Kappas. Isn't that uh, so nice? Love that on Twitch. Thanks so much there. Um, but let me tell you something. It's illegal in nine countries. It is. So we got to make sure that it's legal in everywhere else. So we'll we'll get that all squared away. Thanks, Core Bob. Thanks so much. I tell you. Inconceivable. All right. Let's get into this a little bit. So um, so I can install the extension and put it down in my Visual Studio code. And I've already done that. But we've also been working on a project here on stream where we've been trying to better manage the interactions with the Stream Deck using PowerShell. And we've had some folks in, in the community put together a nice script to copy and move things around and start and stop our Stream Deck application, right? And here's the Stream Deck application. But it it feels it feels brittle, and it also, it, because it's PowerShell, we, we didn't initially make it work over on Mac. Hey, John Jelly IT, thanks so much for that cheer. We'll match and, and make a donation to Black Girls Code. Um, but we didn't we didn't make this this PowerShell script. Initially, our thought was, well, we don't want PowerShell as a requirement for folks who are over on Mac or Linux coding. But if we're using PowerShell Core, maybe that's something that we can enable for those folks on those systems. Would you be interested in helping me out and, and taking a look at that script and seeing what we can do to get it more PowerShell Core appropriate? PowerShell -y. Yeah, yeah. PowerShell. -y. Yeah. 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 Cool. That All sounds right. great. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to navigate over here, show folks where the project is. If you want to check it out, sure. this is Stream Deck Toolkit on GitHub under Fritz and Friends. And if you click through here, you'll see there's a .NET standard library that we've been writing. It's down here in the source folder, uh, and it's Stream Deck Lib. And we've also got this sample plugin. It's our canonical plugin for the Stream Deck. So you can write actions that trigger all kinds of different things when you push a button on the device. I'm, I am a huge fan of the Stream Deck. I've got three of them here running everything for the show right now. And I'm, I'm kind of so jealous. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of crazy about this. There you go. Yeah, there's some coins for you. Um, it, uh, to Lowelo says, ew, dot net. Oh, oh, let me tell you. Dot, <coughs> dot net is pretty good. Okay, give it a try. You might like yeah. it. There's some really neat stu stuff that you can do there. Got the refer Definitely. got referred over here from the Knowledge Foundation. Says the real peace in life. Well, thanks for joining us. The real peace in life. Um, I hope you hope you have have a good time. We learned some stuff together. So inside this uh, sample plugin, and I, I also have this inside of a template. Here's where I have this script that our friend Carrie Payette, she's here in the chat room. She was talking mm -hmm. about running PowerShell on a Raspberry Pi earlier. But yeah. this script is, it's very Windows-centric when I look at this, yes. right? And it, it would be cool to pull this out and maybe do something, do something so that it's a little bit more um, cross-platform. Yes. All right. So let me get the latest version of this. I'm... 
I actually have a hot key wired up that launches PowerShell directly. See, nice. see that chat room? That's that's not me kissing up to to our guest. I've always had that there. Okay, <laughs> didn't go and do that just for this. So let me go over to my project folder, and I'm gonna pull in. Um, I've got some stuff that's. I'm just gonna commit this for right now, uh, and mark it as work in progress. Yep. Sign that. All right. Let me pull the upstream version. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So, and uh, thank you to our new followers. John Jelly IT is that MGYR. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, of course, I've got conflicts. It, it, isn't that always the way? Oh. Um, both modified unit test, connection manager, and that script <clears throat> file. Um, tell you what, I am. I wish I could just it say accept what's coming in. Um, let me. Pardon me for a second while I just merge some of these real quick. Um, alias Yolo, Git commit AM, deal with it and Git push force Origin Master. Thanks, RH Sumner. That's nice. Um, uh, Core Bob rebinds pause break to launch focus PowerShell. You know what? So Core Bob, I actually rebound my caps lock key to do that because I'm never hitting caps lock. Mm. It's like just go launch PowerShell. Mm -hmm. Um. So my Visual Studio code takes a long time to start now because I've got all these plugins. Um, and you can see the PowerShell Command Explorer down here. Ah, there we go. Come on, come on, start up. Give me my, give me my GitHub interaction here, so we can figure out what's what needs to be merged here. Is PowerShell planning on getting tabs at some point, or will Windows sets work here too? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's more of an operating system thing. Yeah, yeah, it is. But um, that would come from from Windows itself rather than from PowerShell. Yeah. Yeah, but honestly, if you're if you're using Visual Studio Code to edit PowerShell, right? I mean, mm -hmm. just open a terminal, and then we can do things like add another terminal, and put it side by side, or right. flip back and forth. So, there's options. There's choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My gosh, this really does take a long time. There we go. Let me merge some of these real quick. Pardon me. I'm sorry. I should have done this. I should have done this before the stream. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm bad like that. Um, come on. Open up. Of course. Double clicking on files that doesn't open. Uh, organic IT. You could still use the IAC and have the tabbed environment. Sure. Absolutely. Um, where's my merge change here? Uh, yeah, the the ISC is is nice. We're trying to use uh, we're trying to get uh, VS Code to be the recommended uh, editor for PowerShell. The ISC will still uh, still be there in box, but just like Windows PowerShell, it's not receiving any more uh, features or anything like that. Okay, uh, we're shifting focus. Uh, because uh, the IC is primarily uh, made for the Windows PowerShell uh, like experience, and so uh, because of that, it would take a huge amount of work to get the ISC working with PowerShell Core, uh, and there are some technical challenges that are are just at the end of the day uh, not all that worth it for a shell that is uh, is supposed to be cross-platform. Mm. So. Yeah. All right. I think that's the last of these changes. My screen has uh, frozen. Oh, no. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's interesting. Let me... It's outputting. It should be going there. Let me restart that. The, the <coughs> screen sharing that I was doing with Tyler just locked up. Need to make sure you can see what's going on. There we go. Let me reshare that back to you. It's a big operation here, folks. Let me tell you. <laughs> big, big, lots of things happening. There we go. 
I'm, all right. I'm so impressed by yeah? your setup. Honestly. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let me commit this. I need a message uh, merged from upstream, and then. All right, I'm not going to worry about these changes for right now. I want to get down into that PowerShell script mm -hmm. and talk about this. Here it is. So, um, gosh, it'd be nice if you could connect in and use this with us. Let me try opening up LiveShare because we love Visual Studio LiveShare. Um, all right, so invitation link copied to the clipboard. I'm going to send Tyler an invitation link here. So LiveShare, in case you haven't seen it, is a way for you to share your code. And it actually traffics back and forth everything about your code, including IntelliSense and IntelliCode. So that you can have folks on your team, folks that you want to collaborate with, be able to connect in and use your code as well. Uh, help code, all kinds of stuff. Just like PowerShell. Uh, VS Code is cross-plat. Just like PowerShell Core. Yep. Yep. Just use VS Code in the embedded terminal on a better OS. Okay. Tried Tmux a short while ago. While too much of a learning curve for what I have going on now, do love the concept and possibilities. Hugo, our friend yeah. uh, No Opcat uses Tmux with Vim, and it is tremendous. All right. Trying to get you connected. Yeah, she's great. Did, uh, right, you got the link there? Is it connecting? Yes. I think it's going. All right. Takes a bit to load the file tree. It's it got to go across the internet. Yes. Uh, however, you uh, the, the screen, screen looks like is frozen, frozen for me again. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, settings. I, it should be coming. Worst case, just uh, read the chat out to me. There you go. All right. I am in the script. Fantastic. That's weird that it keeps freezing like that. Um, one more time. Because it was working. Literally, <laughs> folks, we went for like an hour yesterday, and it was fine the whole time. Really? Oh, the whole time we were on yesterday, yeah. While we were in our... Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it worked flawlessly, flawlessly in our test. There we go. And there it's goes. back. Cool. Perfect. So you're connected in, and I can see that on my screen right here. See this this little one deal here, and it says, follow Tyler. There he is. So I can click that, and there's Tyler, and I can see exactly where you are, and that little <laughs> tape flag and the purple cursor wandering around. Thanks so much for joining us, Core Bob. Have a good stream. Um, all right. So this is the script, and what this script should do, Tyler, is it... After the compile happens, I want on inside of Visual Studio or maybe somebody's compiling at the command line, I want to stop the Stream Deck application. And on Windows, it's in this location. Right. But I, wanna, I need to stop it, copy the contents of my bin folder, put that into a specific Stream Deck um, plug-in folder location, which is, it's under app data, local, blah, 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 blah. Um, and it you'll see it in here. Mm -hmm. And then once it's in that location, I want to restart the application. It sounds too simple. <laughs> I know that it can't be that simple, but we want <laughs> if we want to make this more robust so it works on both Mac and Linux and Windows, what kinds mm -hmm. of steps do we need to take there? I mean, I'm seeing already backslashes here that I want to turn the other way and make sure that they work with the Mac folder locations. What, right. do you, what sticks out to you? Before I even talk about core, does this look like a good script? I mean, it's, are there things here that aren't PowerShell friendly? Yeah, so... I mean, for the most part, the script looks fine. Okay. Um, in fact, a lot of those... Uh, those backslashes as you've mentioned is is kind of a a thing to call out for sure because uh those are typically associated with windows or mm. hang on this way there we go <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh so that's windows uh and of course uh everything else is the other way forward slash yeah. uh that said powershell does do a good job at at honoring those as best it can uh so oh. you know if you have your slashes one way or the other PowerShell will do the best it can to 
to understand that, oh, this is probably a, a directory separator, uh, even though I'm on the platform where this, you know, it's this instead of this or something like that. So it'll adapt um, appropriately from my script to the right. operating system. Right. Okay, that's nice. Uh, yeah. That said, I know uh, on, let's see, what is it? On Linux, mm -hmm. a backslash is technically uh, potentially a part of the path. Uh, a part of the of the file name or folder name, yeah. right? Uh, so my recommendation usually is to just use forward slash because then uh, you cover all of your bases. Ah, oh, okay. Um, that's so so that's like a small thing for us to change. And of course, the the other big thing uh, in this specific case is you know you've got like streamdeck.exe, which obviously uh, is a Windows only executable. Um, I remember when I was looking at it before, uh, you originally had something different here. It was, it looked something along the lines of PS script root plus, and then some other path, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it I, looks I think like I showed you an older version of the script. Yeah. And someone fixed it up to, to add that string, uh, so, templating interpolation there. So it, nice. it does the interpolation without, as a .NET developer or even a JavaScript developer, I'm used to seeing, right, there's a dollar or there's some indicator before the string to say, oh, we're going to do interpolation on this. And PowerShell right. will just interpolate automatically when it sees a dollar? Uh, only because you're using quotes here. So, for example, if I were to switch this to single quotes, yeah, you see that uh, the syntax highlighting tells you that. Uh. Uh, this is going to be interpreted as the string itself. Okay. Uh, whereas with the double uh, quotes, double quotes, uh, you get this as being a different color than the rest of the string. Okay. Yeah. In JavaScript, right? It's the back tick, and it knows right. that that's the interpolation. Okay. Exactly. So okay. similar concept for sure. All right. It, see that. See this, friends. I'm out of my comfort zone. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. All right. Yeah. So let's see um, what else. So dollar env that's referencing environment variables. That's right. Yeah. So dollar okay. uh, env is is pretty typical for referencing environment variables in PowerShell. This works cross platform. Uh, of course, program files uh, is very specific to Windows. So that's mm. uh, that's going to be something we can uh, we'll have to like use a different path for this line entirely, but. Something that is very, uh, in my opinion, just beautiful that was added in, in PowerShell Core uh, was the ability to quite simply differentiate between OSs that you're on. Oh, so, do tell. Yeah, so it, it's very simple. There are three variables. Okay. Is Windows, is Linux, and is Mac OS. Uh, on, and man. those are set by PowerShell, uh, and obviously are true or false based on uh, which operating based system. On whatever oper exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, for our case in this uh, <clears throat> in this script, is we'll, we we are able to leverage these variables to set up our different uh, executable paths, uh, our different uh, build uh, that we want to like copy over, and that sort of thing. It makes it much simpler. Okay. Um, yeah. hey, chat room, let me know if the font size is a little bit too small there for you, okay? Uh, Gumshoe asks, what about BSD? Come on now, Gumshoe. Come on now. Okay. Make it so. Uh, Can we do <laughs> So, uh, So BSD. For BSD, it'd have to first come from, uh, from .NET Core. My understanding is that .NET Core doesn't quite work on BSD yet. Okay. Uh, that said, I, I know a few people uh, out in the wild who uh, said, I'm going to make PowerShell work on BSD. Uh, mm. And they actually like did all this crazy work uh, and they and they got it to start up. Uh, and, and Terrific. So they got it to work. Um, I think a lot of the work wasn't quite ready to like actually be brought in. Um, but... Uh, you know, it's feasibly possible. Mm, <laughs> it's <okay>. possible. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and SQL yeah. DBA with a beard is saying there's also is core CLR. Uh, is there? I don't think 
actually know about this one. I've never used it before. Uh, no, I don't. I don't I know if that's, lower that one S. exists. Um, is core no? Uh, I don't think that's quite one. But uh, another way to do it uh, is that you could look at the version uh, in the PS version table, like so. Like Daniel's um, suggesting. Correct, okay. and then do dot, uh, and then you'll get like a, a PS edition. It should be. Uh, not quite sure why I'm not getting IntelliSense for that, but let me try it on it my side. Well, be live share. Yeah, let me try it over here. If I, so when I control dot there, I'm getting is Linux, is Mac OS, is Windows. Good. Now, so those are some of the other variables we've already defined oh. in here. Yeah, that's probably just the basic IntelliSense from VS Code. Yeah, hmm. there might be an issue with with live share there, but we'll uh, we'll just uh, do what we can with what we've got. Uh, They're asking us to try on the can... terminal. <laughs> yeah, we can. So, right, if I control back tick, it should be sharing the terminal to you as well. Let's see, I do have. Oh yeah, the... so you want to go over to the Let's see, is there anything here? Oh, here we go. Requested I've permission. Requested. I will make it read right for you just this once. It's okay. <laughs> and okay. So and my PowerShell then... is configured with um, with Posh Git, so it configures and knows how to interact with Git and put all the version information right there on on my uh, my command line. It's yeah, it's misbehaving. So this should be a PowerShell command window inside the terminal here it's shared through visual studio live share so that we can both access it and it's misbehaving yeah in both the ways. one that i uh requested doesn't actually show up in your list at all so nice. there's something funny here <laughs> it, yeah this feels like a live share issue if i control dot control back tick again yeah powershell's not starting for me here mm, and that's actually that's not even the extension. That's just uh, VS Code's having a rough time giving you a PowerShell prompt in uh, general. Uh, and uh, RH Sumner is here is saying, "Quick, Tyler, format C slash Q pipe Y." <laughs> uh, Tyler uh, Sumner, you're about to get a serious <laughs> beatdown. We'll have none of that over there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is going to be a long show if we can't actually get the shell working. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, uh, what you're looking for is is PS edition, like like so, <clears throat> and that will tell you whether or not it's uh, oh, here, let core. Me, let me tell you what, I'll open. Or, yeah, that works. I'll, I'll just force it here, and I will. I can execute that right here at the line, right at the command line, right. So dollar PS version table dot PS edition. Yeah. So now so it's telling me since, desktop. Right. Since you're in Windows PowerShell, uh, desktop is the is the addition for, okay. for Windows PowerShell. Uh, naming convention was a little strange in my opinion, but uh, yeah. it's before my time. <laughs> it's, it, you know what? As long as you have a standard and you adhere to it, right? It, right. folks won't, won't care as long as you adhere to it. Uh, right. And so for... Uh, Per PowerShell Core, it would say Core as the PS edition instead. Right. Oh, my gosh. Hang on. Points to Isaac here. I hit Escape since I clicked into it. And now we've got... Oh, you've got something? Because the, the window captures the cursor. So now we're in... Mm. So now I've got it working over here. Thank you. Points to Isaac on that one. Yeah. Right? Oh, my gosh. Um, da, 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 da. So and there was a that's a known bug in VS Code. All right, a very good tip, Isaac. Thank you so much. You know what? And huh. I haven't. I need to do this while I'm here. Um, Save the day. Yeah, Isaac's been a guest on on the on the stream here. I'm going to throw him a VIP. <laughs> oh, um, exclusive. It's, it's telling me unable to add VIP. Why can't we add Isaac as a VIP? Um, then we'll just go this way. Okay. Uh, oh, I know why I can't add him as a VIP, because he's not... That that wasn't his name. There we go. Ah. 
Now he's a VIP. Fantastic. Nice. Did somebody Congrats. say PowerShell? Yes. Thank. Uh, so VIP for Isaac. Thanks so much for joining us and helping out. Uh, yeah, return to dust. We said PowerShell. But there was a question a little bit earlier. I want to make sure that, that we answer this one. And I'm, I know you have an answer for this one, Tyler. And it's a question about what happens when uh, PowerShell is running inside of a Docker container. What values will pop out for the operating system here? Is it, if it's a Linux container, will it, is Linux be true? Right. So okay. uh, that's, that's correct. Yeah. Is Linux would be true for, for a Docker container. Well, I should say, uh, if it's a Linux container, it will be true. Yeah. Uh, if it's a Windows container, uh, is Windows would be true in that case. Gotcha. Now, are um, you able to interact with the shell now that's open here? Let me try. I deleted all of them in an attempt to get us back on track here. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. Yep, so, so I want to go back to the... So SQL DBA with a beard. Thank you for pointing out uh, the is... Uh, is core CLR. I mm. didn't realize that was a thing. Uh, <laughs> and that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it yeah. does exist. So if you do dollar uh, is, well, actually, you don't have PowerShell core on your machine. I don't. I have PowerShell for Windows. Yes. Uh, well, when yeah. So uh, for those, maybe we should just say, just show people how they could get PowerShell core real quick. Sure, absolutely. So I'm going to go back over to the browser. Let me open that up, and I am, well, let me go, here's, right, this is PowerShell PowerShell here in GitHub, right? And yeah. down here was a get PowerShell item. I'm going to copy that link, and let me paste this into, that's not the right, that's not the right, it's this link. Come on, copy the link. So, that link. Hey, Mr. Regs, good to see you. There's a link to get you to this point so you can get PowerShell with an install package or an RPM or a Debian yeah. file. Um, okay. Also, if you uh, want a quick way to install uh, install the package on Windows, for example, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I have a, a nice one-liner for you uh, that will install the MSI uh, and also the preview version of, of PowerShell Core. Holy crow. All right, do you want me to run that? that you That's just up pasted to you. It? All right, I'm going to run it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so uh, why don't you go ahead and share that into the chat room so that, yes. the, so that those folks can get that. I'm going to go over to this PowerShell that I had open, and you're telling me, so I have, all right, hang on. Uh, we've got ampersand and then IRM, a.k.a. MS, install PowerShell PS1. Now, this will work. What's going on? Yeah, well, what's going on? And yeah. will this work on just Windows? Yeah, so okay. there's a parameter there that says dash use MSI. Okay. Uh, that would mean that this particular uh, execution would only work on Windows. Okay. Uh, that said, uh, there is a Linux equivalent to this. Um, and there are two alcoves here. There's one where you already have PowerShell on installed in Linux and need to, you know, update or whatever the case may be. There's a one-liner for that. Okay. Or there's also uh, a shell script as well for if you're on Linux or Mac OS and you haven't installed it for the first time, or, you know, you haven't installed it yet, uh, there's a, a shell script that will do just that. And I can go ahead and show off both of those. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and go ahead and paste them into the chat room there, so folks can yeah. copy it out if they want to go and kick off and install themselves here. Um, and Code Therapist is saying, "Wait, master, it might be dangerous." I trust <laughs> Tyler. Okay, <laughs> I trust him. We're gonna have not have a problem installing this. Here we go. Um, all right, so it did something. Uh, did I not copy that right? Let me see what happened. Did it drop something there? Oh, so let me scroll to the bottom. Did I miss? Did you miss a? Are we missing a character? Because it actually just dumped out that script. Right. So the. Uh, That's a big script. Wait. Let's. Yeah. It is. It is quite large. Um, let's see. That looks right to me. Um, 
Very strange. And Lee wants um, to send me the Rick Roll ASCII PowerShell thing. Now don't do that. <laughs> um, this is funny. I let me just double check. Did Skype emojify the one-liner? Ooh. No, I don't Ooh, think I so. Think, I think I have an update. Here we go. Here, this, this one says an image. Hang on. Let me let me quickly type this out uh, for you. Okay. Um, and Basically, for... my uh, manager uh, tweeted this particular one-liner. Yeah. Uh, oh, I missed a part. That's why. It's because I'm... I'm bad at copy pasting. Bad Just, at copy pasting? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Who knew? I deserve that one. <laughs> <laughs> there uh, we go. We copy needed one more. All right. One more layer. There we go. Oh, look at that. I E X. Yeah. There we go. Now let's give that a shot. So I E X yes. is that's Internet Explorer, isn't it? No, no. So IEX what is, uh, that? So is uh, an alias for a command in PowerShell called invoke expression. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. And IRM is the alias for invoke rest method. Okay. Uh, which is basically like a, like a curl equivalent, right? Those are uh, HTTP client, go get this thing. Yes. Ah, I exactly. see. So what this is doing is it's going and grabbing the script from this URL, okay, uh, and then using IEX, uh, it will invoke that script with those parameters that are at the end. Okay, so that's that's what it's doing. And uh, Dilly Dalex yeah. is saying, to be fair, Control C is pretty tough. Yeah, it is. Thanks, thanks, is. thanks so much. I'm waiting. All right, so, here we go. This time, this chat now. it's going to run no problem. What is the ampersand for? That's a good question. The, the ampersand uh, here. Right. So the ampersand is uh, the call operator in PowerShell. Uh, and what it says is basically like uh, invoke this, like invoke this. It's it's similar to, to IEX, um, but uh, a little bit different. <laughs> but a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Let's kick that off and see what happens. About to download package from. Fantastic. Go get it. Go get there it. You go. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, so that's got the preview four, which is our latest preview. Uh, six dot two is is the I preview her. version, and then six dot one is the stable currently. So I'll click through uh, and, and accept all the things here. Giving the Linux people their uh, Th their command line to run it. Their command in just a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, enable PowerShell remoting. Should I do that? Uh, sure. It's uh, PowerShell remoting is uh, don't don't um, don't break my <laughs> no. Uh, PowerShell remoting is the ability to, uh, as the name implies, remote to another machine via PowerShell. Right. Okay. Uh, you could do this in Windows PowerShell for uh, quite some time, and this is just uh, giving you the option to enable or disable it in in PowerShell Core. Okay. Uh, it's it's actually really really powerful stuff. Um, PowerShell remoting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Brett Miller IT says scope difference in in a child scope, if I recall. Um, maybe. I don't know. Is that for uh, the call operator? Is that is that the response for that? Oh, look at that! Twitch shortened sure. the one liner that you posted in there. Did it? Oh, yeah. Of course. <laughs> nice. Funny. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say finish there. The MS Doc site has instructions on other ways to install. Okay, cool. Yes, I was actually gonna mention the Doc site. Um, so there we go. It's installed. Now, how do right. I run PowerShell Core, not PowerShell? So uh, there are two different executable names. Okay. Uh, PowerShell, as you know, is PowerShell.exe. Mm -hmm. uh, and we didn't want to drive anybody crazy if they installed PowerShell Core, so we renamed the executable to pwsh. So it's pwsh.exe, uh, and that'll give you the thing, so long as it's added to your to your path. All right, so then I need to restart so that I get a fresh path. 
Yes. Fresh path, just the way that that Mama used to make it. That's right. All right. So if hot I hot off the press, hot off the press. So I'm running PWSH right here from. There you go. And it's up and running now. Let me mm -hmm. let me apply some of my settings here for the yes, show. Yes, of course. Um, I like having larger font size, so our friends that are watching can see. I like the I like black background and green text. Nice. Because I'm I'm an old guy like that. I'm used right. to 3270 the... terminals. Mm -hmm. um, now I had Posh Git installed. Mm -hmm. Can I run Posh Git on top of PowerShell Core? Yeah. So. Um... Let's see. If you do uh, get module, G-E-T dash module, and if you hit tab, it uh, will complete for you. Uh, and then you do uh, get rid of that guy. But uh, if you do dash uh, and then type list and then hit tab, you'll get list available. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then do uh, a space there and type posh git as the name implies. I think it's posh dash git. Is the name of the module? Type it right, Jeff. Uh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, <clears throat> I think you have to reinst uh, reinstall it for for PowerShell Core. Okay. Uh, which is just simply install module. Uh, posh git. Posh git. Yep. And then. And like most things in PowerShell. Uh, Casing doesn't matter, so. Good. I'm a big fan of casing not mattering. Yes. Uh, yes to all. Do it. And then. Okay. That looks okay. like it's installed. <coughs> so let's Answer. see if I go back here. So you might remember that you're, uh, that the way you enable PoshKit is by using, uh, by making a small modification to your profile. Right. Uh, to add the import module. Okay. Uh, as a test, you can just do import dash module posh git. And posh dash git. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. There it is. All right. Oh. So where's awesome. my profile kept when I'm running PowerShell core? Right. So if you just type dollar profile, that's going to give you a path. Ah, okay. Okay. So that's different from the one that I had before. Right. So mm. the other one, if you go into Windows PowerShell, it'll say something along the lines of, uh, you know, your user and then slash Windows PowerShell or something like that. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm trying to copy yeah. that and then paste it there. So I open it in Notepad. Do I want to create a new file? Uh, yes, please. Yes. And then inside here, just type the import module, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I will copy that, paste it over here, save, close. And if I restart, it should now be running with that module installed. Okay. Yeah, you could have used VS Code to open that, but Notepad's quick when we just wanted to paste a line in there. Oh, look at Hugo. VI dollar profile. And you blow it! No, we're not doing VI, VI. here. Come on Not now. Vim. Come on. <laughs> um, Daniel you're, uh, says you're not a fan of tab completion. I I am. <laughs> I'm I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. We're learning here, all right? That is uh, definitely one of the f like funniest things I see is uh, people who come primarily from like a bash world uh, that will be like, PowerShell is too verbose. I have to oh. type a million things, right? Uh, and my first response to them is like, uh, well, it's actually mostly behind a tab completion. So yeah. uh, well, it's pretty nice. Oh, my gosh. It, it, I'm, I feel like I need to be in Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code in order to do tab completion. To, to have it on the command line feels like, okay, I'll mm -hmm. get used to this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and on Windows, uh, probably one of my favorite things to do is uh, if you do like a control space when you want to tab completion something. Yeah. Uh, so type, uh, I don't know, type like I and then do control space. Uh, oh, you'll wow. You'll get an actual like list and yeah. Oh my gosh. Nice. Just like we would get with IntelliSense <laughs> inside Visual Studio. 
Oh yes. my god. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's honestly PowerShell in in my opinion, and I'm a bit biased, is probably one of the most discoverable languages uh that I've ever seen. Uh, yeah. Uh, I had no idea this was here. Look, I can run iTunes right from no, I don't. Have to do that. <laughs> um but wow. Okay. Okay. Between this and uh there's a whole help system that's uh great for figuring out what things do. Uh, and it's fantastic. Okay. Um, in about 10 minutes. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Go tell your <laughs> friends. Go run out there on Twitter. Let folks know. We're going to run the, our, our giveaway for a, a stream deck here in about 10 minutes. Okay. Let me know. We're going to get there. Um, Kasukin, thank you so much for that tier one sub. Five months in a row. Fantastic. We'll make a donation to Black Girls Code. Nice. Um, all right, so so I've got PowerShell Core installed. If I go back over to Visual Studio Code, now how do I make sure that my my terminal here mm -hmm. is there a way to flip it between PowerShell and PowerShell Core? Um, <clears throat> so in VS Code, uh, I believe you can configure that uh, to be the default uh, terminal. Mm. Uh, however, for uh, just getting things started here, you can always just type PWSH. And just in jump there. across. Um, yeah. Oh, it's, you might need to. The path. Yeah, it's not on the path. Crashed. So I would need to kill it and restart it. Yes. So kill it, restart it. Should be there now. Okay, so now if I do PWSH. Nope, still doesn't find mm. it. Um, <laughs> it's odd. I wonder if it's because. Visual Studio Code. Ah, right. Was yes. It inherits before. the path from uh, from VS Code. It's Tragic. in settings. F one reload. Really. F one. Reload window. Sure. Let's do it. Now mm -hmm. that also disconnected Tyler from my uh, live share session, so we're gonna have to reestablish that. Um, I'm not gonna open the workspace. Yeah, look at this. Everything's got to reattach and reload. There's a couple things in here that just take a long time. So I didn't even think it, that F1 opens the thing. I'm always used to Control Shift P <laughs> to get okay. the window there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, look at that. You you bumped Tyler off the session here. Here we go. Starting the collaboration session. Da 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 da. Ooh. And, uh, invitation link. Good. So I'll go back over to our Skype session. There's the session. Thank you. And uh, settings. And it's integrated terminal, isn't it? No. I don't want right. Azure preferences. Open settings. Yeah, give me the UI. Yeah, so for a little bit of context, the, um, the PowerShell integrated console that you see in your list of uh, consoles. Oh, uh, that's right. It actually uh, looks like the screen just froze again. But, did it? Uh, it did. <laughs> that's all right. Um, so that that is actually started from the PowerShell extension itself. Uh, oh. And what that does is that gives you this, uh, as the name says, interactive session that uh, has your PowerShell session at the bottom tied to your editor above. So when mm. you type for completions in the editor, they're coming from the console the, below. Okay. And so you can like quickly uh, use that uh, as a way to um, to test know, things, test things out, and that nice. sort of thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so it's loading. Uh, loading. Live loading. share. While that's loading, I'm going to reshare the <laughs> the uh, uh, the session or yeah, the, the studio thing. monitor. Yeah. It's called. It's uh, bright. It's bright now. <laughs> Who knew? Bright in the yeah. Seattle area, right? That's, that's right. Crazy There's, talk. Can't see any of the snow. Can you? Mm, it's, oh, it's out there. It's out there. Barely yeah. see it. Tons of snow. <laughs> well. For Seattle, I guess. For Seattle. Three yeah. inches is tons of snow for Seattle. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Still waiting for that connection. Come on. PowerShell. Yeah. It's joining. So uh, Pac-Man Jr. 
Thank you so much for that tier one sub. Live session. Absolutely a live session. Thank you, Pac-Man Jr. for joining us. Ten months. Awesome. Wow. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Uh, Dr. Lee, thank you so much. Is it Dr. Lee or or Drelay? I think it look, looks like Dr. Lee. Thanks so much for the follow. 5225. Oh, man. I'm going to end up dying my beard here. Live session dot PS1. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> kind of, kind of. I actually have All right. <clears throat> buttons that activate everything. Okay, so you're back in, you're back connected yeah. now that we went through that. So, But we do have the integrated terminal here that's using... Yeah, let's see. Yeah. Right, PowerShell Core. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, if you look down at the bottom right, it does say that you are using uh, 5.1. Yeah. But if you click on that... Okay. You can oh. see there's switch to PowerShell Core 6 dash preview. And if I do that, <coughs> restarting. Yep. Ooh. All right. All right. There we go. So now if you do the dollar uh, is core and hit tab, we should get core CLR, which should shows up. Nice. And it's true. Okay. So now we, in the editor type dollar uh, is core. It should show up. Oh, yeah. Uh, there oh, we yeah. go. Now we're cooking. Nice. Okay. So we've got mm. we've got different ways now to detect and move around those different versions. Yes. Awesome. And then uh, if you ever want to test something that you've written in your editor, mm -hmm. uh, you can select that code and hit F8, and it will run it for you down in the console below. So I've selected it. Hang on. Let me, let me make sure I have... I usually have Karnak running here so folks can see when I'm when I'm using hotkeys like that. There mm. we go. So I've highlighted is Mac OS and if yep. I hit F right, I hit F eight, didn't I? F eight. There it goes. There is go. Mac OS. So it, it copied it down immediately and executed. Okay. I get yep. it. Um Alf That's the debugging loop, the testing loop that you have there. Okay. Uh, is testing that, out your scripts. Is that Alfredo Tagolo? Uh, let me let me know how to, how you pronounce that. Is this Visual Studio Community? This is actually Visual Studio Code, so it's text editor freely available for anybody to use on Windows, Mac, or Linux. Completely open source. So, it didn't load my profile for Posh Git. Yes. Says animated Slinky. You're right. Yes, the reason behind that is because VS Code, uh, the PowerShell extension for VS Code, has a separate profile. Uh, ah. So if you do dollar profile in your editor or in your yeah console, you'll notice that the the oh it says look at Microsoft that up. yeah. So uh, you can either one add that same line of code uh, to the here. I'll show you a quick trick that I oh, like uh, a quick trick that I like to do. So go ahead. You uh, there's this command in the, the shell is yours. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there's the command in the integrated console called PS edit. Um, and what it'll do is it'll take a file that you pass it uh, and it'll open it right in your editor above. Oh, so that's if you good. Do, yeah. So what I love to do when messing with my profile yeah, is yeah. I'll do PS edit, uh, all one word, uh, and then space dollar profile. Uh, and uh, it does oh, not it exist. exist yet. That's fine. Uh, there's, there's a command for that as well. Okay. Uh, so PS edit is an alias of a command called open editor file. Uh, there is also a new dash a new editor file that you can use like that. Uh, -huh. yeah. Ah, and then okay. Specify dollar profile dollar profile in theory that will open it up. So it'll create that new file. Oh, uh, and yeah. Okay. Hang on. Right. And yep. then, uh, huh. Yep. And save it. Damn. And so, in theory, if we restart our our session, which we can do in a couple different ways. Don't hit the trash. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, if you hit that 6.2 down at the bottom, yep. there should be a uh, restart current session. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and so... And then there was that thing my, that well. Isaac was telling us about how... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there it is. Nice. Okay. All right. All right, so, my gosh, the, j just the, th the three or four little tips that we hit there in installing the PowerShell core, 
Getting it reset. Here's how to get into the profile. Yeah, animated Slinky. Thanks so much for that kind cheer. And uh, we'll make a, a donation to Black Girl's Code. Thank you so much. You can also use PS Edit to load files remotely. Do tell. Yes. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Eventually, we'll uh, we'll actually take a look at the script. I know, right? <laughs> but there's just so much PowerShell goodness to to talk about. There is, uh, yeah. So we talked about PowerShell remoting briefly. Yeah. Uh, and so what you can do in the PowerShell extension, for example, is you can set up a remote session mm -hmm. uh, to another machine, and then if you type ps edit, uh, it will open it in your editor above. So the file exists on the local on the other machine. Uh, but you can edit it just as you would uh, something that's a on local the file. local machine. Yeah. Very cool. So, so that's really cool in uh, Daniel Silva's perspective because I know him. Uh, is he uh, wrote some really cool stuff with uh, a Raspberry Pi, mm. and so VS Code doesn't work on a Raspberry Pi just yet, as far as I know. No, it's, uh, a, little, it's a little heavy. Right. So what you can do is enter into a remote session on that Raspberry Pi, and then open the files, the PowerShell files that are there, and Locally. then edit them. Nice. So <clears throat> it's this... really, it's uh, so much stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this feels like a good place to pause for just a quick yeah. minute here. I think we need to give away a stream deck. I think we need to do that. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. It's time. Here's what we're going to do, friends. What I want you to do, there in the chat room, I want you to key in the command exclamation point stream deck. Now, Ooh. why did it why did it just change that back? Go ahead and key that into into the um, into the chat room, and we'll enter you into uh, the raffle here. All, All right. right. Now here we go. I, I should start to see folks pop in here. Uh, time to give away a stream deck. Now, why isn't it adding people in here? Um, this is weird. It should be, yes, it's one entry per person. Um, Ooh. why isn't it I'm adding? tempted, Janice. Leave Jan blank to Jan listen to. Skew. Hang on, it's not adding, folks. Let's try this again. There we go. Oh, now the oh, folks are popping go. in. I'm sorry, go ahead and make sure you key that again. I want to make sure everybody has... No, there is no apply and save. <laughs> Go ahead. There we go. Get folks into the chat room. Into the thing. Oh, here they come. That's good. Here we go. I'm so tempted to do it myself. Go for it. That's fine. <laughs> no. I uh, I, uh, I have one coming. It's on the way. All right. Now, this is uh, thanks to our friends over at Elgato. They're, they just saw their logo go by there. <clears throat> they're, they're very thankful for the work that we've been doing on the Stream Deck library and the Stream Deck toolkit. And they want to show their thanks to folks here in the chat room. Look at this. I ran a practice one earlier. And uh, we want to make sure that you have a chance to, to get your own Stream Deck so you can try it out, You learn how to use the, the device, maybe build something cool with it, a cool action with C Sharp, .NET. You can even use JavaScript and some other languages to build your own plugin for it. So we've got 42 people in the in the uh, in the giveaway at this point, there's there's uh, 92 of you out there. About 50 of you haven't keyed in yet. So now the chat engagement for Twitch is up. Yes, it is, Stelly. Yes, it is. <laughs> Get in there. Go ahead, key it in. I'm going to give you about another 30 seconds, and uh, and then we'll kick this off. <laughs> Oh, yeah. There's Veronica joining in. All right. How do we know if we are in, asks Lee. Well, it's going to be in the list here. And if I scroll down, there's Lee. And I've got 46 people in the list right now. If I make this, yeah, it just stretches bigger. Um, shiny Hunting Addict. Hello, hello. Welcome. And if you're new here, go ahead and make sure you click that follow button up at the top. We've got some follower goals we're trying to reach here. Didn't want to spam it. Not a problem. Nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you're in. There you are. So, all right. What do you say? Let's hit this button and and, and see if we can give one away here. 
Oh, I'm uh, so excited. Yeah? The animation is The animation's fantastic. insane. Need the con it's countdown so good. clock. Uh, we do need the countdown clock. Do we have one? Um, I don't. But I could. No. Not going to do it. All right. Should we just... Let's hit it. Let's hit the button. Here Let's we go. Let's do it. Carbon6978, thank you for the follow. Here we go. Zombie Hoser, thank you for the follow. Time to give away. Now, see, it changed the text on me again. It resets this. That's the wrong text. Mm. I'm going to grab some more water while we're... Absolutely. While this goes... I learned this from our friend Cool Tony. And our winner today is... Developer's Garage! Congratulations! Here's what I want you to do. Thank you so much, Developer's Garage. Um, see, I should have changed this. It should have said an Elgato Stream Deck, but it resets these things. Anyways, uh, here's what I want you to do, Developer's Garage. Drop me, drop me a message. Congratulations, absolutely, out there. And uh, there we go, some applause. Here's what I want you to do. Drop me a message. Uh, drop me a whisper here on Twitch or drop me a direct message on Twitter. Um, major thank you to Elgato. Absolutely. Uh, your heart skipped as it ticked over your name. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, so drop me, a, drop me a line. And what I'm going to need is uh, just a little bit of contact information so that we can get connected and make sure that they can ship you a stream deck. So close for a couple folks. Janescu, you've won a lot of things on my streams. <laughs> <laughs> you've won a lot. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to do. If you don't mind, I'm actually going to share this out. So we've got a thing here. Developer's Garage has won the Stream Deck giveaway. I'm going to put an at sign in front of that, isn't it? Right? Developer's... No. Uh, developer's Garage. And uh, I'm going to send that tweet out. There we go. Post that out to Twitter. Thank you so much to our friends over at, at Elgato. We're going to run another one of these giveaways tomorrow and on Sunday on my stream. So you have two more chances to win. And I've got another raffle that we're going to be announcing. I think we're going to announce it tomorrow. We'll, we'll see about this one. Developers, developers, developers garage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, so this is the nice. Lash tools. L-A-C-H-H -H tools. You can see it up here. It's a free tool, uses, um, it's Adobe Air to run all this, and you can actually create different animations for it if you're interested. So, very cool. Yep, absolutely, Developer's Garage. Thank you to Elgato, and, and you're very welcome. I hope you have a, a good time with the, with the device when it gets to you. We build some cool things together. All right, so let's get back into the script. We're finally into the script. We got Core all right. set up, PowerShell Core all right. set up. And we wanted to change some of these things so that it works cross-platform. Hang on. SQL DBA with a beard is saying turn on yeah. screencast mode. Hang on. It's cool. Really? Toggle screencast yeah. mode. Now what? Type. Oh, now it sees my clicks. Look at that. Type. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a little nutty. <laughs> All right. Fine. You got me there. Good call, uh, SQL DBA with a beard. I'm going to save that, and I'll turn off Karnak over here. I see how this works. But Karnak's a, f a personal favorite, but very cool stuff. All right, all right, all right. How do we start optimizing yes. this so that it'll work better on those other environments, on Mac and, and Linux? And we so, do have the Mac standing by. It's sitting over here, friends, in the chat room. Nice. So, all right, so we... I think what we need to do to this script specifically is figure out what uh, what parts are OS specific, mm. right? Okay. And then we'll maybe put those <clears throat> like uh, up at the top or something. Uh, so I think quite obviously this is one that is very mm. much so Windows specific. Tell you what, let me put the the script, the shell script, and let's put those side by side so that we can see. Ah, yeah the two of them, so that we can pick up some of those other locations and we can see them just copy back and forth between the two. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do the same. Yeah. Cool. So, <clears throat> so for that one, 
uh, I see over here in the shell script is, where is it? Ah, your stream is in the way. Okay. Uh, where is it? I'll move Where's out of the, the way. executable? Um, you know what? In this side. Um, that's... Hmm. Oh, there so it is. Yeah, that's for the Mac. Here. Now, this is interesting, right? We need to make sure that it, we only have the, sh the shell script working on Mac because the Stream Deck oh. device only works on a Mac. Right. So maybe at the top here, uh, we do if... Uh, so what I like to do here is in Windows PowerShell, which uh, there's still... Uh, a lot of people use since it's in Windows by default. Uh, there is no dollar is Windows. Uh, so what I like to do is I'll do dollar is Mac OS, mm. and then the else is uh, you know we is use the Windows this, one. Yeah. right? Because then that will that will cover our bases in both uh, Windows PowerShell and PowerShell Core. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So then we'll grab this. And we can do stream like that. Uh, I believe this is fine. I don't think yeah, we necessarily because there's need a, that. Well, there's a space. Yeah. Uh, oh, but PowerShell can handle it. Right, right, ah, right, right. So, okay, okay. That should be fine. I guess we'll find out. So, so we've uh, made this cross-platform. All right, what Sumner is saying that's not scoped. What do you mean it's not scoped? Uh, if uh, if I reference that variable here, it will work. Ah, okay. If that's what you meant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> D did it need to be declared outside of the if? It doesn't. Okay. PowerShell uh, has something called uh, dynamic scope scoping, uh, oh. which is uh, tough for a lot of people to get their heads around because it's so, uh, I guess, unnatural for a lot of people who come from C Sharp or other languages JavaScript. where you know you need to yeah. do this at the top, right? Uh, but in PowerShell, you don't need to do that. Fantastic. Um, yeah. In fact, actually, what you can do, and this is going to look really silly, uh, but is also very PowerShell-y, uh, is I can do this, uh, and I will do equals here. And this kind of acts like a uh, like a ternary operator type of thing. Ah. It checks to see if this conditional is true. If so, then you get back this, uh, which it gets stored here. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, go with this one. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that's uh, you know it, I think it's a little bit. Uh, I don't know which is uh, a little bit. I don't know which one is easier to read in those two cases. Um, but we can go with this for now. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. So next is this guy. So, yeah. in fact, we might as well just bring that up to that if statement that we've mm. already messed with, right? Okay. So let's do that. We'll reuse that one if statement. <clears throat> and so for this, this guy on OS, I believe it's... Yeah, it's going to be OSX-64. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, memorizing the uh, .NET RIDs uh, <laughs> has become quite useful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It, it's, it, it, it's such a breath of fresh air to see, right? .NET RIDs, you're referring to the runtime identifiers that .NET uses yes. so that you know which operating system and which processor or architecture it's using. Yeah. Uh -huh. it is, it's nice to have that. But for folks like us who need to bounce around between them because we're building these things, <laughs> right? It's a little, right. a little annoying to have to memorize all of them. Yeah. So, so let's see here. Uh, I wanted to take a look at this because up here where we set uh, PS script root or where we set base path equal to PS script root. I think I uh, lost I you. There you are. You're up top there. Gotcha. I found you. Uh, I thought that was a, a little bit strange, mm. but I see, okay, if PS script root length is equal to zero, 
Okay. So I think this is this is interesting. Um, so PS script root is a variable that PowerShell sets uh, when a script is run, mm. and it says PS script root is the directory of where this script is, whatever you're in. Okay. Uh, so if we were to run register plugin and start Stream Deck, I can guarantee you that this will never be uh, null, never be unassigned. Okay. But uh, so this this check is is uh, kind of unnecessary. Mm. But we can leave it in for now because what it does allow for, I suppose, is you can then select all your code and hit F8, and that will run it down below. Uh, and in that case, PS script root will be uh, not assigned because uh, because it's not running from within a script, it's running within your terminal down below. Does that running make sense? Directly. Kind yeah, of that, rare. that makes sense. Okay. So we can keep that in there for now. I just wanted to, it was something that I saw earlier that I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, but now talking through it, uh, I think it's fine to leave okay. there. So this is all fine. All this stuff will work cross platform. Dilly Daleks is asking, wouldn't exclamation point dollar ps uh, script root work the same way in this instance yeah yeah uh that's a good point we instead of uh yeah instead of doing this you can do uh like this like that uh which is basically like it's uh like in javascript it's uh like a truthy falsy operation ah, type of thing okay uh if PS script root is assigned, uh, then it is. Then this would evaluate to true. Uh, if it is not assigned, it will evaluate to false. And then, of course, in a lot of languages, you have the exclamation mark, which means reverse the boolean. Uh, and so, you know, this would mean that if PS script root is not assigned, then uh, then do the code block, uh, then do the if statement type of thing. So yeah, we can we can do that. That's uh, that's uh, a little bit cleaner. So I brought a few people from the the PowerShell community on the stream. So now they're gonna they're gonna like try to <laughs> help me fix uh, the the little small things that I uh, that I miss. But that's great. Oh, this is this is that's why, why I call we it. do this. This is yeah. pair programming, right? Yeah. We've got we've got friends out there that have insight and in things that they haven't that that we may not have seen to to help out here. Um, just a just a quick reminder to folks in the chat room. We try and keep things family friendly here, so please <laughs> don't swear. <laughs> no bullying, none of that stuff. We have we we want this to be a very inclusive community, and uh, folks like Robert Tables are here and, and really help demonstrate that a little bit. So let's make sure that you know eh, we're we're all you know helping folks out here. All right. Yeah, and what they're saying is, in this case, you can either do the dollar, uh, the exclamation mark, or you can do dash not in front. That oh, also okay. Works. Yeah, it's just many ways to to do the same thing. <clears throat> cool. Uh, so let's see what we got here. So this is all fun. Yeah, in fact, here, <laughs> same thing. The dash not. So let's see. All right. Uh, you pick your poison else? to do things. Yes, you do, Janescu. <laughs> All right. So um, let, me, let me make sure I'm following you around there. There we go. Oh, yeah. I'm just going down, down the script. All right. So here's where things get uh, specific. Right here, this line. <clears throat> right so yeah there's another place so the destination directory where are we going to copy the the plugin to what's the folder that it needs to land in and that is that env app data that's the application data folder here on windows right but when we're on mac we need to be somewhere else right so let's go ahead and look at our shell script here and see if we can let me open that source. figure out where it goes 
All right, so I you're in the think. shell script. Yeah, so... Plugin name. Project director Wait. bin. <clears throat> um, how does this work? Uh, do you know how this how this works on, on Mac OS? Like, yeah, uh, so there is... Where they end up? Here it is, yeah. plugins directory. See it up there? Dollar Home Library. This is on line 14, right? Ah, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. So oh, that's the base so directory that it's going to copy into. It's going to create that plugin, plugin directory. Well, it removes it and makes it here on lines 23 through 25. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So... So plugins dir, all right. So we do that. Okay, I see. So it's doing a push D uh, to the plugins directory, and then it's going to copy it over and put it into this place that I'm already in. So push D, that navigates to that folder and then right. hides it on the stack. It remembers right. that location. Or right. it remembers where you came from, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a, a push D alias in PowerShell, actually. Uh, that does uh, the exact same thing. Oh, it's cool, cool. Quite nice. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the URL that we want for the macOS side. And then this is the one that we want for the Windows side. I've got them uh, side by side. So I'm going to take the one from... Uh, from the shell from the script. Shell. Yeah. And I'm going to do another if statement down here for now. <clears throat> I'm in the, the PowerShell now. Okay. So we're doing another if Mac OS, and then that's the location on Mac. And yep. then just drop in the same Windows location. <clears throat> and then. Right. The only difference here is that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, we need to also include the plugin. Yeah, that, to this path. Yeah, the name of it, where it's going to land. Okay. Yeah. And there again, we see the the we, we see the slashes back and forth because of the different file mm -hmm. file system structures. But um, we um, okay. So you're going to put the plugin ID SD plugin in there. What about the dollar home at the beginning? Dollar home is uh, also set in PowerShell. Okay. So even though that's not lit up as as the cyan, as the blue color there. Uh, right, because it's, uh, it's a special variable. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Hugo was asking, do we need to do dollar env home there instead? Well, there's, a, there's an easy way to test it. If you've got the integrated console available to you, uh, you can just type. Oh, I can't edit this one. I'm going to request it from you. Uh, yes, go ahead. Dollar home, if you have it open. Oh, yeah, there it is. And there it is. So it, it just works. Yep, just cool. works like magic. Uh, yeah, because the home directory is just so crucial uh, in uh, in scripting in general. Mm. So, all right, this looks right to me. Does that look right to you? Yeah, yeah, Seems that looks right. Seems to be right. similar paths. Yep. Once it gets down into the application data, whether it's application support on Mac or app data, then it's Elgato, Stream Deck plugins. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Uh, <clears throat> so then we, okay, get process. Now, get process does work cross platform. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so this should work, but we, we definitely should, should test it out on a Mac to see, to, to make sure that it gets back exactly uh, what we expect it to get back gosh if only we had a mac case. standing by that's right exactly <laughs> uh and let's see binder okay binder plus star copy item yeah i think that looks fine okay uh so we're doing okay so we're building a path here 
So another quick tip, and I, oh yeah, we do it here as well. Um, in PowerShell, you can do join path, like so. Okay. And then we can do uh, binder and then star like that. And that will cross platform, figure out what slashes need to go which way mm. uh, and okay. join them correctly. Yeah, uh, Brett Miller IT there is uh, cheering on there. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Lightning bolt. Yeah, join path. So uh, one of the things that we exposed in, in PowerShell core was that you can like continue to put directories after the fact, like foo, var, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and Windows PowerShell, it can only combine two things. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you'd have to shell out to the to the .NET command, mm. which is like uh, system dot io dot path, path. Dot join. You know, you know what it is. Oh my gosh, I know it like the back of my hand. Right. I've is been it doing join that. or is it combine? Uh, yeah. Oh, combine. It's combine. Yeah. And and you see here, I'm calling out to .NET specifically, and I get IntelliSense for that as well. Well, you're getting IntelliSense. Uh, we can't see it oh. over here, but I can do that, and now I get the IntelliSense. There it is. Okay. Yep. Didn't know you could do that from PowerShell. You could jump into .NET by yeah, putting brackets. Yeah, this is how you do it. Uh, you put the namespace in the brackets, okay, and then colon, colon, and then that lets you call any methods or whatever you want to call uh, uh, or reference in .NET. You have full uh, .NET, .NET access right from PowerShell. Okay. And uh, Dilly Daleks is asking, PS Core can join more than two paths at once? Yes, it can. I think uh -huh. it was added in 6.0, uh, but if not, it was added in 6.1. So there is, uh, yeah, it can do that. And Code Pagoda, because we're using PowerShell Core, this is .NET Core. Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah, here's a, an example down in the console, if you can see. Let me open the console again. Uh, um, there it is. There you go. Nice. Nice. <clears throat> that uh, makes things easier. So anyway. it, it's, it's get rid of, getting rid of all the little paper cuts. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so we might as well go ahead and, and replace all the other instances of that. I see one here. Uh, a little bit higher up, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay. But now you were telling me earlier, since it does the interpolation, should I put, couldn't we just put binder slash manifest JSON without yeah, doing the join? We, but the join we definitely will, could do that. But the join will appropriately handle the, the file system. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's the benefit. Gotcha. Um, right, just like this, right? Like you did up here. Yes. Works uh, works just as well. And up here would be nice as well. I think this is the last one. Okay. Uh, was that base? Yeah, it was base path. One. Was yep. That? Yep. And okay. I think that's it. Do you see any more? Um, we're, we're already in a, in a OS specific there on 25 and 28. So okay. that one's okay. Got to flip those. Um, okay. Those are already flipped. It's and looking good. I love the, the line 40 convert from JSON and it grabs the, oh. the content of our manifest file. It's beautiful. And allows oh. us to, to walk it. How about we can do this all in one line? What? Yeah, yeah. So one of the biggest powerful, uh, one of the more powerful things about PowerShell huh, uh, is the use of the pipeline uh, and piping things. Uh... So what you can do here is just straight, uh, just like that. And what this says is, give me the raw contents of the file. So I'm just going to get that big string of Open the file. Open it up, read everything, okay. Yeah, and then pipe it right to convert uh, from JSON, uh, and that'll do those two lines in one. Okay, and then, uh, oh, all right, can we, get, can we get even crazier with the pipeline, and after convert from JSON, pipe the, 
the action zero UUID from line 41? Mm. Is that, or is that a little too crazy? Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely possible because uh, what you can do here is you could wrap this in parentheses like so. Mm -hmm. And then from here, you can do dot and then reference it like this. Uh, okay. I think that's a little uh, unclear what the intention is there. Uh, especially if you don't quite know uh, what's going on in the JSON file. Okay. So, so to do I think it for readability purposes, yeah, um, this looks nicer. But yeah, it, it is possible. Also, I, I happen to notice that uh, we only use this manifest file uh, variable once. So in theory, we could like, uh, I believe we could just add that to the front of the pipe. Yeah. I believe so. Um, and then we would just do something like this. We might have to test that one. PowerShell people in the chat are going to say, no, you can't yeah, I'm, do that. I'm seeing Brett Miller <laughs> IT w wanting to pipe in select first one proper UUID. Okay, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, that's actually a very good point. So what you're pivoting then between um, .NET object-oriented programming and something that's very script syntax like what Brett is suggesting there. Yeah. Right. The beautiful thing about PowerShell is that you have, you have these .NET objects that are getting passed through the pipeline rather than, uh, rather than, uh, you know, like, uh, strings that you have to like parse in the mm -hmm. next thing of the pipeline that you would have to do in like bash, for example. Sure. Sure. Uh, SQL DB able to be a get, are you sure get content first? Either would work. Yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah, well, let's just try this. I mean, we uh, what we're going to do here is we're joining the path. And what that's going to do is that's going to make the path, pass it to the next thing in the pipeline, to the get content. Okay. It's going to get the raw contents of that and then pass it to the next thing, to the convert from JSON. Right. Uh, I think that should work. We'll, we'll have to do some testing, but uh, that's fine. Let's see. I think that's more or less. Uh, I think this is more or less good to go. It it does. Uh, so we've taken steps to make it a little bit more cross-platform friendly, so that folks who yes. do have PowerShell on Mac can take advantage of the same script file. Um, very cool. Let's give it a shot on Windows and make sure it still works the same way. So what I'm going to do before we execute. I'm going to go into App Data Elgato Stream Deck Plugins. Make sure that that folder is there for us. So I'm just going to pop open here and go percent app data percent. Navigate There's also to that location. Something at the bottom of the script that tried to start the right. So we thing, want, but it's commented out. Let's I don't go know ahead. Let's put it back in there. Yeah, that should be right. in there because when we build this right one of the first things that we do is we kill the stream deck application which is right here we don't need that exit zero so i'm going to close minimize that so you can see it down here on my taskbar right above that two in rainbow beard build 2019 okay um here's sample plugin right here and you can see it's got a date of january 27 not for long oh we will not restart the stream deck here, but will from the template. Um, Any idea what that means? <laughs> um, hang on. So, Carrie's saying we took it out to have the debugger launch the stream deck. Oh. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So, let's, let's leave that commented. Way? Yeah, leave it commented out then. Okay. So, this is... Right, I've got there's there's a couple of folks that have been really going to town, doing a great job building and and tuning some of the features here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna trust Carrie on this one, and then uh, you can do it. We can run it, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's give it a shot. All right. Um, if debug, yeah, in debug mode it does that, but we're gonna kick this off right from the command line because we have we have the plugin. Let me 
if I just build, it should actually, right? It should execute this. Right, because your build script runs this script. Is that right? Yeah, right. So if I, here's sample plugin. If I go to the CS proj here, at the end, there is a statement. Now, this is project, uh, the in the project file, it says it wants to copy in the register uh, plugin and start stream deck. Post build yeah. as a post build event. Right now, it says if the OS is Windows NT, execute PowerShell mm. with the yeah, appropriate call into that. If we have this strung together correctly, we're going to be able to remove this second line and that condition. Yeah. Or maybe we need to change, well, the, change the condition slightly to make sure that PowerShell exists. Yes. Okay. Yes. We still want to give those folks who, who don't have PowerShell Core on their on their Mac, the ability to still use Bash, and that's totally fine. Okay, let's let's just take a look at one or two questions in the chat room. Are we getting the sure. correct value for Dollar Stream Deck Exe Path for the platform? Yeah, so that's one of the ones that we made platform specific. Uh, up, if you want to go back to the script and scroll up, uh, there you are. So yep. it pivots appropriately based on your operating system. Correct. Hey, JP, thanks so much for the follow. My buddy, JP Toto, is here. Oh, my gosh. What'd you do? He joined us. That's what he did. He clicked follow because he wants to see me dye my beard rainbow for build 2019. It's becoming a thing, me dyeing my beard, let me tell you. Um, all, right. all right. Let's build this yeah. and, and see if it kicks it off. See if everything executes properly. So I'm going to just, from the, from the, the script here, I'm just going to .NET build. Yeah, let's give it a try. See All what happens. right, there's the restore. It's doing, doing, finish the restore, doing the build. There's the .NET standard library. Good. I will Sample be plugin. Oh, impressed if this works on the first time. <laughs> of course, it's going to work on the first time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right, we've got a couple of messages here. Let's see if we can see what's going on. Input right. object could not be bound to any parameters for the command because the command does not take pipeline input. Yada, yada, yada. Ah, okay. So that was the particular line I was like, this might work, but it might not work. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and revert that back. That was that join path into, into get content. And what it's saying there is that get content uh, doesn't take things from the pipeline, uh, which is uh, strange. <clears throat> but, uh, but that's fine. We can honor that. So there are two ways to do this. Okay. We could either store it in a in a variable as it was before. In uh, I think we called it manifest path. We tried to get too cute there. Yeah. yeah, we tried to get too cute. That's what happened. Let's just do it. Uh, and this should be path path like so all right uh, the other thing I was gonna say is that we can take this join path and then put it in parentheses and then it will evaluate that first before mm. evaluating the get content but again a little too cute this uh, is a lot simpler for folks to understand okay uh, all right so what else did we see so that was an error um, Right host gathering deployment items. So that was. Oh, was there a typo somewhere? Where'd it go? Uh, uh, where'd it go? Which? It's all the way up top. Hmm. Like it's there's odd. a question mark ahead of it. Like there's a byte order mark or something there. Yeah. Potentially. I know you have. Yeah, you've got, it's encoded with UTF-8 with bomb, so that seems fine to me. Um, so there was that. Cannot index into a null or write write because it couldn't get the content. Yeah. So that yeah, trickled down fine. here, which meant uh, that this, yeah, was a null valued expression yeah. because it couldn't find it, could not find the path. Uh, right. Another thing that we could do that I noticed was uh, down at the very bottom of the script, there was this remove item. 
I'm going to delete that SD plugin folder that it created by accident. Okay. All right, so where were you? Down at the bottom of the script. There yeah, you are. there's a remove item here. Yes. Uh, and if if the directory doesn't already exist, or if the directory, uh, yeah, if the red directory doesn't exist, it's going to throw a little uh, error saying, hey, uh, this directory didn't exist that you wanted me to delete. Yeah. Uh, in order to ignore that, we can just do error action silently continue, uh, and then we won't get that uh, that error. Okay, just like I would use a slash Q if I was working right on the command line. Right, right, okay. right. So let's give this right. one more shot. Give it a try. Give it a try. And and I'm quickly running out of time here. I have a hard stop at noon. Let's, let's oh, see okay. if we get this. So there we go. The build, it should run very, very quickly. And this time, can I find a process? Right, because the process was already killed. Um, so get process. That's fine. We we should make sure that there, just like you said before, error action silently continue. Yeah. It's kind of loud about that. It is. Uh, it needs to be silent. <laughs> oh, on both uh... sides. Oh, okay. So this error action silently continued was just on the stop process. Getting the mm -hmm. process, it wasn't okay. Yeah. So that takes care of that. So directory. Da, 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 those da. are uh, they're that non terminating, looks... meaning it'll just like log an error to the console and still continue the script. So it's not the so end of the world. This looks like this wrote it out properly. I'm going to go over here to my plugins folder, and there it is: com C sharp Fritz sample plugin SD plugin, and it's got the February Whoa. seven date, and the contents are there with the images folder like I would expect it to be with the default images right now, including nice. this guy with the colorful beard. Um, nice. Fantastic. So it worked great here on Windows. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, let's... Uh, well, I, can't, I, <laughs> can't play my, I can't play my music here on the Stream Deck uh. because it didn't relaunch the Stream Deck. Uh, so I'll click that button and restart. Um, that's a good idea, SQL DBA with a beard. If get process, stop process. Oh, yeah, that is that is a very good idea. I'm going to tell it not to attach those two debuggers, um, which is a whole other thing that we need to figure out at some point. I've actually got somebody from the debugger team that's going to join us, and we'll talk more about those types of things. Um, so it's running. So where was it with the if process? to kill the pro here. So we yeah. could do that if get yeah. process. It's like you've done it before. <laughs> um, yeah, that would work. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. I actually have I have a hard stop here. I've got to end in, in just a few minutes. So I think what we should do is we should commit our changes. Yeah. And we can come back and we can test on a Mac tomorrow. Okay. Or folks can submit a pull request. Or if, if there's anything additional that we wanted to do here, we can come back to that. I We can take the pull request and talk, and I can talk about it tomorrow because it'll be just me coding tomorrow. Cool? Sounds great. Thanks so much, Tyler. Let me let me head Absolutely. over here to this. And we'll, we, we will get that. Um, we'll, we will get the script copied over into the template as well. Um, that'll need to be a secondary process here. But for this, mm -hmm. let's just get the message in here. And I want to make sure that I say co-authored. It should put the co-authored in there automatically for us. From, mm. right? Co-authored by, right? Isn't that how it goes? And then we we punch in your name here. Um, is that popping you in the box there? Uh what, which box? Sorry. In the the source control box. Right. I thought it, Live Share had a co-authored feature mm, here. I don't see it. I see that it's been staged. Yeah, and I'm trying to. It's staged, and I'm trying to get the the co-authored by link in there, and it's not popping up for me. Hmm. Um. Hmm. All right. That's all right. Do a commit and check. All right. We'll get it in. So updated to be more cross-platform friendly. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, save and commit. Yes, please. And I'll key in my... 
key there. Fantastic. I will push that up. Da -da -da. Get push. And that'll be on mine, and then I'll create a pull request and get it over into the main later. Thanks so much, Tyler. This is great. We I I really learned a lot here. So many cool new things that are happening with PowerShell yeah. that I just wasn't exposed to. Here, let me go back so we're side by side there. There we go. Um, worst case, we can do an amend. Absolutely. But I've, I've learned a lot. I've got PowerShell Core now installed here on my Windows machine. I, I also have it installed on my Mac. So I've got the same thing running in both both environments. We saw how easy it is to get installed with that great one-liner you gave us. And we've got um, we've got now a more cross-platform friendly uh, script. That's great. I, That's right. I really like that because I don't like pivoting back and forth between Bash and PowerShell. I want to keep everything yeah. in one language. Yeah. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I think we should we should raid the .NET community stand-up, the mobile community stand-up is starting right now over on the Visual Studio channel. So what I'd like to do, Tyler, is I'd like to do a raid over to Visual Studio. That sounds great. Cool. So um, yeah. friends that are there in the chat room, if you want to see the mobile community stand up, that's going to be hosted by our friend uh, James Montemagno. Sit right back, and the magic of, of uh, Twitch will take you quickly over there. You'll be whisked over to see our friends on the Visual Studio channel. Thanks so much, Tyler. This was great. I really appreciate yeah. your insight and your expertise helping us out here. <laughs> Friends, make sure you check out PowerShell Live. Check out that channel. And check out Tyler's yeah. channel. Let's sort of shout out there into the, yeah. into the chat My room. channel is uh, just my name. Uh, I'm actually thinking about streaming possibly in uh, about an hour's time, uh, depending on how I'm feeling. <laughs> Terrific. I have to get to work. I have oh, to figure yeah. out how to get to work. But, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, probably going to be streaming in an hour. Uh, the PowerShell Live channel will will notify on Twitter when that happens. So yeah, sounds good for that. Alrighty, thanks so much. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, so much fun. I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll be writing some more code, working with the Stream Deck next week, Wednesday. I'll be streaming live from Twitch's offices. Keep an eye out for more details about that. And so Thursday next week. I, the invite is out, and we'll see. Yeah, the shout-out didn't work. Uh, something with the bot. But Thursday next week, wait till you hear this, Tyler. Mm. We're we're confirming he's interested in helping us out. We're going to have a David Fowler code review. Ooh. We're trying to we're going to lock that down. It's either going to be next week or maybe a little bit later. Keep an eye out for more details about that. But David, David Fowler, the principal architect for .NET, is going to yeah. do a code review for us. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you next time. Say hello to our friends over there on the Visual Studio channel. Take care. Bye. And there they went. All right. <laughs>